Okay, so episode five of Pi News. The first one I wanted to cover uh, is a really important one. So RetroArch got hacked. So hacker vandalized our BuildBot and GitHub organization. I saw it first on this Facebook post uh, by Tim Keane. Don't update your current RetroArch cause for a little while. Hacker vandalized our BuildBot and GitHub organization. The same hacker apparently found a way to get into our GitHub LibRetro organization and start removing the entire Git history and commits from all our repositories. We will keep you updated as this situation unfolds. For now, we have a serious targeted sabotage situation going on with our first BuildBot server being attacked and then someone getting access to the GitHub organization and start wiping stuff. We have backups of the organization anyway, but this still sucks. We hope GitHub will be able to assist us in tracking down the perpetrator and restoring this situation. So don't update your RetroPie builds. They'll let you know when something has changed. So if you either check the Reddit RetroPie uh, or go to the LibRetro website, you'll get the information there. But uh, yeah, not good news. Uh, so the next one up is uh, PyLab. So I'm using Twister OS version 1.5, which is excellent, and it just keeps on improving. And there's so many themes on this. So we've got Raspbian X and Nighthawk, iRaspbian and iRaspbian Dark, Raspbian 95, so Windows 95, and Windows XP, and Twister OS. So yeah, loads and loads on there. Um, and it just keeps getting better and better. So good work to the PyLabs team. Uh, let's go back to this and uh, I did notice uh, he actually messaged me uh, and haven't responded yet but uh, this video uh, showing Sega Rally and he tells me it's working even better uh, than the Dreamcast version and I had the Dreamcast w version working pretty good but actually when you look at this it is running proper smooth and really quite fast I better pause it because I can't really keep showing it but he also shows this Star Wars game at Pod Racer, which is also looking pretty smooth. And I don't know this last one, but it looked, I thought it was something like Silent Hill, Resident Evil, or something, but it looked pretty decent at 60 FPS as well. So have a look at PyLabs to see the whole video, uh, but that's running in Box 86 uh, and on the Raspberry Pi 4. So great work there. Jose has also been adding more things to PyKiss. I can't keep up with the uh, the things that he keeps updating. A couple of things. I saw other Pi YouTubers did a video on this uh, retro terminal and I had loads of stuff that I was doing at the time, so I didn't do it. But uh, if you have a look at it, it, uh, it has a really nice look to it and PyKiss does the installation for you. So it's got this old school style monitor. I'll put a link in the description to all of this, but have a look at Jose's uh, video to see uh, how you can do that for yourself. And the other one, just yesterday, uh, Sirius Sam got added to PyKiss. There you go, so the graphics look pretty good and uh, it seemed to be running pretty smooth. Interesting game, we've got to check that out at some point. So I also have just received my maker block case from DeSalvo Systems. So I got this case recently, did a video on it and absolutely loved it. And I've had my pie in it and I only recently took it out because I had to put it in another case. I've actually ordered a Pi for two gig because I want to do some videos on that and I want to do some comparisons on that because a lot of people ask about the two gig one and I've only ever had four gig and eight gig. But the one I just received from DeSalvo Systems is this maker block case. So it's a slightly bigger than the one I had before, but it's got lots of ventilation uh, and it also has lots of screw connections so you can add things onto it. So it's described as a maker block case, but I'll do a separate video on that. So I had a comment from walk on at YCLB, easy to say for the first time. Uh, how about a video on visa mounts for monitors? Uh, and he sent me a link for Amazon and I clicked on the link. And uh, first of all, funny enough, the picture I saw was that. And I thought, ah, oh, it's not really for me because I would want to add cooling to it. And I did think before I got my rack case, uh, and I really love my rack case from 52Pi, that is my main case and I've got my SSD plugged in all the time and that's what I'm using at the moment. But, uh, but yeah, this really looked interesting because if you flick through it, actually you can add cooling. And because it's going on the visa mounts on the back of your monitor, strange how they don't show it on the back of a monitor, but basically visa is the industry standard for the back of TVs and some monitors. Now, not all monitors have a visa mount um, because they're just not designed for wall mounting. 
but, uh, but most do. If you have a look on the back of your monitor and you've got four holes equidistant apart and uh, it's usually seven and a half centimetres, 10 centimetres, 20 centimetres, they're all sort of metric sizes. You can pop your pie in there, you could add whatever cooling, and I've got that ice tower cooling that I'll be able to add soon, so it'll be a bit heavy on the back of a monitor, but I'll, I might have a look at that. Uh, and then you, you can just have it hidden. Now, the only thing about it is if you do need to plug things in, uh, obviously these will be central on the back of the TV or the monitor. Obviously I think the pie is slightly differently because I'm always changing SD cards and plugging SSD drives and accessories and messing about with it. But if you're using it uh, with the same operating system most of the time and you're booting up using it as a daily computer, then actually it's really nice to have this. It's a bit like an iMac where you'd have your computer hidden behind the monitor so all you see is the monitor uh, and you can have a wireless mouse and keyboard and have a really nice setup. So it did say, can it be shipped to your location? I haven't looked fully into it yet. but. I like the principle of it, I like the idea of it, so thanks very much for that comment. I'm not going to try and say the name again. So last thing, uh, I saw this um, keyboard and mouse combo where the Pi goes inside of it. I like the idea of it. Um, I would like it if the micro SD slot was over here. I don't know what they've done with the micro SD slot. I guess they're probably using a ribbon. No, it's not there, look. Maybe it's on the back. I don't know what that hatch is, but I just thought it looked interesting. Uh, and uh, quite a nice, quite a nice way of having uh, your. So it, uh, it's another solution. It's not, you know, like like I just showed the Visa mount. This is another way of doing it. It means that the actual mouse and keyboard and Pi is all together. You just have an HDMI cable coming out, and you'd have a power cable going in. But uh, but yeah, very interesting. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.